Standards and protocols then. So what's kind of key to understand here is that computers thrive really, and the people who use them thrive on predictability. So if everything is unpredictable and everyone does their own thing um, on the internet, how to create um, hardware and how to send messages on the internet, then computers really can't communicate or any small number of them can. But if everyone agrees to follow a, a standard set of rules for how to sort of communicate and how hardware functions, then everything gets a lot easier. And I'll give you some examples of that, but let's just cover that as a definition. So a standard is an agreed set of rules for manufacturers and developers to follow. So that is people who are making hardware and software. That's important to sort of state. Uh, and I'll give you an example of this. So USB, for example, you almost certainly have some devices in your computer connected uh, to your computer via USB. So I've got my microphone, uh, I've got a mouse, I've got keyboards, all connected via USB. That is an agreed upon standard. It's a hardware standard. Can you imagine if each different component on your PC had a slightly different connection? how much more complicated that would be for everyone to use. And it kind of did used to be that way, I will say. It hasn't always been that everything's got a USB cable at the end of it to connect it to the computer. It wasn't always like that. Um, and can you imagine then as well that maybe a different manufacturer, so um, like a Logitech mouse, for example, had a slightly different connection to a Microsoft mouse? Well, we'd get into trouble there, wouldn't we? You'd have lots of different cables and computers would have to have lots of different ports on them uh, and everything would be a lot more complicated. So if we all follow the same standard of USB to connecting to a computer, physically so it's right from sort of the size of the actual port itself so how big that is to how electrical signals are sent along it then we have an agreed standard and it is very very useful to you us as users but also to manufacturers as well but this is also hit to developers as well so HTML is another example of a standard. That's in a software standard. So that is something where we have all agreed that web pages should be communicated in a particular format using this thing called HTML. And if you try to send a web page across the internet in a format which wasn't HTML, well, no browser would be able to understand it because every internet browser we have um, is primed to follow HTML as a, as a standard, okay? So there's a couple of examples of really useful standards uh, that we have across the internet. So where do protocols come in? Well, protocols are standards, but they are particularly standards which are all about communicating between different computers. So these are a set of rules for how a computer can communicate to another computer uh, on a network. So they are standards, but they're sort of like uh, the specialized standards all to do with communication. And we're gonna go through a few different ones here and how uh, they are useful. So the first couple that we can tick off is HTTP uh, and then we'll do HTTPS. These are all about sending web pages again. So if I'm sending a web page across the internet, I will actually use both HTML and HTTP to do that. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTPS is the secure version of HTTP. So depending on what you're doing, you either want to use HTTP or HTTPS. The big difference here, I'm just going to write, it's, you know, it's this one, but it's got secure on the end. The big difference here is that it is encrypted. And that is so important. That means that if somebody was to intercept your data, maybe you're browsing your bank website and you're looking at your bank account, for example, uh, so it's got all your account details on. If somebody was to intercept uh, that communication between you and your bank, it wouldn't matter because it is encrypted so they wouldn't be able to read it and have a look for the video about uh, encryption so you can find out more about that but yeah it's all about browsing websites uh, securely so they're two easy ones to remember all about uh, looking at web pages we've also got TCP IP and this is all about how you send data through a network it stands for uh, transmission control protocol and then you've got uh, internet protocol as well and this is all about sending data through a network and have a look at the uh, the separate video all about IP addressing if you want a little bit more information about how that's done so HTTP HTTPS TCP IP we also have FTP. Now that is a file transfer protocol. That is all about how to move big bits of data, so big files rather than web, web pages uh, from one place in the internet to another. Okay, the next three protocols that you need to be aware of are all to do with email. So I'll just quickly put an up an example. Um, imagine that you are sending an email and you're doing it from uh, Gmail to, I don't know, ilovecheese.com. Okay. So here is your email here. To send that email to ilovecheese.com, there's only one real option to do it, and that is using something called SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So that sends emails uh, between email servers. 
And look, here's your email. It's just been sent by SMTP, so it's now there. It's in ilovecheese.com. But now it's actually, there's a couple of different options because you've not received your email yet. Look, you're here. You're make, let's pretend you're the marketing uh, person at ilovecheese.com and you're looking on your phone. You've not received your email yet. And there's a couple of different options for you to get that email. The first one is called IMAP, and that's the one which tends to be used um, a lot more these days. So this is the Internet Message Access Protocol. So that lets you get your email email from your email server but it critically does not delete the email after you have received it after you have downloaded it so a copy of it will stay on that server forever so using your IMAP uh, you're going from here now uh, to here onto your phone so you see the difference SMTP is going from your Gmail account to ilovecheese.com and then IMAP is getting it from that internet, uh, that email server there to your phone or device at home. So IMAP is one option, but there is actually another option as well that we can take uh, if we're downloading emails, and that is using POP, which is the post office protocol. Now that does exactly the same thing as, uh, as IMAP, and it's actually POP3 uh, that we use. But the big difference is um, that it deletes the email after you have got a copy of it. So they are all the protocols you need to be aware of. If you've got all the protocols in your head, you know what a protocol is and you can explain it and you can describe what a standard is as well, then you're all sorted. If you found that video useful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.